Hello, I can see seven participants already. Welcome to you. And today we're going to be doing a special session um, joined by our friends from OET around the world as well from uh, YouTube. So do feel free. We've got 21 participants in the room now. Say hello or give me a thumbs up if you can hear me in the chat box. It would be lovely to uh, see you there. Hello, Simon. It's nice to see your face, as it were, and the thumbs up. Thank you. And Divya, welcome. Hello, Neva. Mohammed, hello. Hello to you. Good to have you here. So it's very early where I am. Hi, Sheikh. Hi, Alicia. And we've got some um, people joining now in YouTube. Welcome to our friends there. We've got lots of faces. We've got Dania, Sangaya, Gaji, Tina, Ava. Hello. And a lot of people are joining very early today uh, in the UK. Um, we've got an interesting greeting from Laurie. <laughs> Good morning, Madivan. Lots of friends uh, joining us from YouTube as well as E2 test prep today. Um, saying hello to patients. Hi, Zoo. Hi, Myrna. Zaria, it's lovely to have you here. And Tolu. So we've got a mixture of people coming in today. We've got our friends from um, E2 test prep, and we're also uh, going live on YouTube as well. Myrna from um, KSA and a Zoom user, mysterious. Wonderful to have you. All right, so um, it looks like you can hear me and you can see me. Um, as usual, I will say to people in E2 test prep, please use the chat box here and set it to everyone so I can see questions and comments. And our friends in YouTube as well, I'll be glancing over there as well occasionally to see what is happening as well. So thank you very much for joining. And we've got more and more people. We've got a very busy class here for E2 test prep. We've got Jonah Walla, Indu again, Kamusta to Devin in the Philippines, Zara, Myrna. I think I've said hello to almost everybody who has come in, Roshika in Nepal, fantastic. So thank you very much. I'm gonna drop off camera now and get going on this. Now, because we just have a short session as this is shared with our friends in uh, OET and YouTube, I'm going to be jumping straight into it, the active and the passive for OET writing. And I will say that I'll be keeping questions brief until the very end, okay? Because we've just got a short session. So let's start off by thinking about when you use the active and the passive, you will have a usual sentence with subject, verb, object. And when you use the active, it's when the subject is doing something. So for example, we have the doctor discharged Mr. Smith. Now, to make a passive sentence, you can switch the subject and object, excuse me, and you can say, well, Mr. Smith was discharged by the doctor. You can also remove the original subject, and then you can just say, Mr. Smith was discharged. Where's the doctor gone? We, we don't know. It's just all about Mr. Smith, right? There he is on his own. Now, it's important to think, why would you write a passive sentence? Well, you might want to do it to remove the subject because it's not important or to emphasize the object, in this case, Mr. Smith. So let's have a look at removing the subject because it's not important. Have a look at this passive sentence. Mr. Smith was prescribed aspirin. Who prescribed the aspirin? Who prescribed the aspirin? Can you have a think about who that might be? Who prescribed the aspirin? Mr. Smith was prescribed aspirin. Well, actually, it's beside the point. Who cares who knows about it? In this case, it's pretty predictable um, who might have prescribed it. Now, if it was an active sentence, it would read like this. Someone prescribed aspirin to Mr. Smith or aspirin was prescribed to Mr. Smith. OK, so the first one is an active sentence, but the subject is anonymous. And here in the second sentence, it's passive. And the focus now is about the aspirin. 
Okay, so here we've got someone prescribed aspirin to Mr. Smith. And it switches over and we've got Mr. Smith was prescribed aspirin by someone. We can drop away the by someone and we just get Mr. Smith was prescribed aspirin. So now let's have a little um, activity. Yeah, that's right, I mean, we don't know. Try and guess the hidden subject. Okay, now I'll pause here and see what you guys say um, in the comments. Mr. Smith's leg was x-rayed. Mr. Smith's leg was x-rayed. Who might the subject be? Who might the subject be? Not the subject, who, the person who actually did the x-ray. Who might the original be? Who did the x-ray? Someone. <laughs> Divi is saying radiographer, doctor. In this sentence, it's unknown. Zara is suggesting a technician. We've got another person saying rad tech. Yeah. So we could take a guess, common sense guess, a radiographer x-rayed Mr. Smith's leg. Okay. So far, so predictable. Okay. Now let's try it again. Mr. Smith's heart monitor was delivered today. Who delivered it? Who delivered it? Any ideas? A delivery agent, says Divya. Yeah, very good. A delivery agent. We said a postman. The postman delivered Mr. Smith's heart monitor today. <laughs> Sorry, that's a very strange sentence, isn't it? It's quite a responsible postman there. Um, a cardiologist is suggested by Neva. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it would, when should we use the active or passive? Let's have a think about that again. Or we might say, when should active or passive be used? And it depends on what you want to emphasize. Okay, so there's the two sentences. When should I use active or passive? When should active or passive be used? Slightly different emphasis in those two sentences, right? See if you can put into the chat how you think those two sentences have a different emphasis. What's the difference in emphasis, in focus between the two? What's the difference in emphasis? Any ideas? Ayman is saying the first one is on the subject exactly, right? I, it's me using, you know, thinking about my OET test and what to write and when to write and how to write. Yeah, so the first one is all about the subject. And the second one is really about the rule that applies to everyone, okay? So this, the, the passive gives a kind of clinical tone, right? It gives them a sense of more objectivity. Okay, so now let's have a look at some samples again. Um, in the active, it says a paramedic treated Mr. Smith for concussion at the scene of the accident. And the passive says Mr. Smith was treated for concussion at the scene of the accident and a paramedic has dropped away in the passive. So which one do you think is a more natural emphasis? Which one is more likely to be appearing in an OET paper? What do you think? The first or the second, the active or the passive? The passive, exactly. Yes. What about this one? A local shopkeeper treated Mr. Smith for concussion at the scene of the accident. Or in passive, Mr. Smith was treated for concussion at the scene of the accident. In this case, in this case, well, a lot of you are saying now I need to, um, the active should be used. I agree. I agree. Why? Because it's not what you would expect, right? It's not quite what you'd expect. Here we have another one. An anonymous person in an internet chat room advised Mr. Smith not to eat porridge. That's the active. And then the passive, Mr. Smith was advised not to eat porridge. Which one do you think looks better? In this case, I would say the active is a little bit 
more informative, right? Because it, this is not quite what we'd expect, right? Um, Mr. Smith to be taking his dietary advice. Yeah, now we, we could also say Mr. Smith was advised not to eat porridge by an anonymous person in the internet chat room. Could work like that, but actually we really want to emphasize the random nature of how Mr. Smith is getting his dietary advice. So here I would probably go with the active. It's a bit of a strange example, but you, I hope you get the, the understanding from this that really it's your decision about when to use the active and the passive, and it depends on what you want to emphasize. Here we've got uh, two more, see which one you think is better, active or passive. Yeah, passive is better here. Good. Um, and in this one, what do you think? Active or passive? Yeah, the active because there's something um, unique, uniquely interesting about the, um, the subject. Okay, brilliant. <laughs> now, again, it is up to you. It's your decision. Someone saying oops on YouTube. <laughs> okay, so now let's have a quick look at how you form a passive sentence. You probably studied this at school. You're probably familiar with it, but let's just break it down. So we've got the nurse took Mr. Smith's blood in the active voice. And we've got the stages. We first identify the subject and object. Second stage, switch them. Three, add the B verb. And then four, change the verb to the past participle. Five, keep or delete the original subject. So here, the nurse took Mr. Smith's blood, identify the subject and the object. So it's nurse is the subject and Mr. Smith's blood is the object. Then we're going to switch them. All right, so wow, Mr. Smith's blood took the nurse. All right, it's still not quite right. So now we're going to add the be verb in the past, present or future. And now we have Mr. Smith's blood was took the nurse. All right. Still not quite right. We've got to change the verb to the past participle. OK, and we've got Mr. Smith's blood was taken the nurse. OK, um, and then we're going to keep or delete the original subject. So we've got the new sentence, Mr. Smith's blood was taken by the nurse. Okay, I can see my slide was slightly out of sync there. I'm sorry about that, but you get the picture. Okay, there's these stages that we go through. Okay, so we've got the original active sentence, the nurse took Mr. Smith's blood yesterday and the passive Mr. Smith's blood was taken yesterday. Now we're gonna change things up a little bit. OK, so this is what you really need to learn and get clear about when you're learning the passive. OK, so we've got all of the different tenses here. So we've got the present simple, the past simple, the future simple, present continuous and then the past continuous, past perfect, uh, present perfect and past perfect here. And you'll see that we've got the past participle and the passive, it's examined every single time it's the same. And the thing that you need to really pay attention to is the conjugation of the verb to be. All right. So it's going to change is or are, for example, in the present, sim present depending on whether the patient, we've got patient or patients, OK, whether the Original object is singular or plural. Now you can watch this later because of time constraints. I'm not going to go through each, each one individually. But what I do encourage you to do is to pay attention to the original object, singular or plural, because that's going to change. As you can see here, English has got some tricky conjugations. Pay attention to is, are, was, were, is, are, has, have. Okay, now obviously we go into more detail about this in our um, grammar classes, but that's my little hint for you where I see people making mistakes in this part of English. Let's actually put this into practice. I'd like you to tr try to change active to passive. So we've got examine, I examined Mr. Smith. Can you make that into a passive sentence? 
Make that into a passive sentence if you can. Any ideas? Well done, Iman. Yes, Mr. Smith was examined. Fantastic. Active, I will examine Mr. Smith. I've got three words here. Three words here. Well done, well, oh yeah, Mr. Smith will be examined. Very good. Next one, I am examining Mr. Smith. I am examining Mr. Smith, three words here. Very good, Shaikh, and yeah, yeah, you're all over this. This means you're doing so well. Yeah, Mr. Smith is being examined. So what's important to notice here, like I said, is Mr. Smith goes with is, right? Not am. So you're using the right form of to be according to the original object. Yeah. Check your spelling for um, that one there, Edehomo. I have examined Mr. Smith. Now, this is where people sometimes get confused. I have examined Mr. Smith. Three words. Fantastic. Has been examined. Has been examined. Now, it's not have, because like I said to you, we want to use the correct form with um, Mr. Smith, not I. Yeah. Okay, good. It has been. That's where we want to be careful. Good. So let's do a quick recap. We write a passive sentence because we want to remove the subject because it's not important or to emphasize the object. In this case, our patient, Mr. Smith. We have five stages to change active to passive. And when should the passive be used? To de-emphasize the performer of the action to emphasize the action itself. So now let's have a look at some um, discharge notes for patient Mr. Mitra. We've got A, antibiotics to continue for 10 days. B, advice on smoking cessation, patient to try alone initially. A query on a smoking cessation support group, right? Mr. Mitra might not do so well attempting to see smoking on his own. So there's a query about a smoking cessation support group. There's a physiotherapist appointment, 30th November, and a note, an unvaccinated against seasonal influenza, anxious about possible side effects. Now I'd like to give you a, a moment or two to think, how would you write that into sentences? Okay, in the OET test, we just see notes. OK, and you're challenged to write sentences. Can you write any of these sentences in the passive form? I'll give you a minute just to have a go at that. Mm -hmm. Got some interesting ideas coming in on, on uh, E2 test prep. Yeah, good ideas here. Mm hmm. While I hear is saying antibiotics should be continued, I'm having a look at what's going on in YouTube. Let me refresh, see what's happening there, what suggestions our friends here are giving us. Maybe another 30 seconds or so. Uh-huh. All right, so let's have a look at what has been suggested. Antibiotics should be continued for 10 days. I've also noticed um, we've got some interesting suggestions here. Zahra said antibiotic will be continued for 10 days. We've got Mr. Mitra was advised to continue his antibiotics for 10 days. That's very nice. Same one from Zoom user. Kindly no antibiotics have to be continued for 10 days. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mitra was advised to take antibiotic for 10 days. Yeah, I'm sorry, I've used the uh, British way of writing antibiotics, so you could write antibiotic. Good, 
but um, we're on the same mind, uh, of the same mind here. Well done. Let's try the next one, see what was we could have here. Mr. Mitra was advised to see smoking and he agreed to try on his own. All right, let's see what we've got about the smoking cessation. Okay, so someone saying he has been advised to try smoking cessation initially. I would probably go for the past simple, not the, um, the present continuous, just he was advised. Mm -hmm. In YouTube, we've got a suggestion in the active as well. He needs to continue antibiotics for 10 days from Meru. That works as well. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you just wrote antibiotics to, to be continued, I would say that looks more like a note. I'm just looking at a suggestion in YouTube. We need to have the um, part of to be in this for it to sound like a proper sentence. So I'll just make that little correction there. Now I've got a bit of time here. Yeah. Good. Let's try the next one. He may benefit from being referred to a smoking cessation support group. He may benefit from being referred to a social smoking cessation support group. So here the passive is the ING form. It's used as what we call the gerund, being referred. So this is a little bit different, but it's the idea of an activity, right? And a beneficial activity. We'll see if anyone's got anything in YouTube about the smoking cessation support group. Nothing came coming in just yet. I'll give you another minute or so. Oh, okay. Zoom user saying um, he can be referred to smoking cessation support groups. Yeah, yeah. We're using a slightly softer pattern here because this is a, a more of a suggestion at this point, pointing something out that to the reader. Mm. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. And again, as I said, it was about the physiotherapist appointment. I'll just let you see D again. Physiotherapist appointment. Okay, any suggestions about the physiotherapist appointment? How should we write that? How could we write that? Physiotherapist support appointment. Well done, Divya. She says, appointment with physiotherapist is arranged on 30th of November. Yeah, I've written it in the present perfect. A physiotherapist appointment has been arranged for 30th of November. Now, we can't say you'll be having an appointment with the physio. There was one suggestion saying you will be having an appointment because we're, we're talking about the patient. Yeah. Okay, and now the last one, I'll just let you see the last one. Unvaccinated against seasonal influenza, anxious about possible side effects. Any suggestions for E? All right, we've got a suggestion, have been vaccinated. have been vaccinated, not quite have been vaccinated. Make sure that we're talking about the patient, about the patient, because this is a discharge letter, right? Like you're having OET, you're probably writing to the patient's GP or family doctor. Right, so we've got a suggestion here, he is not vaccinated, he has not been vaccinated. Mm, very good. Any other suggestions about how to write about the uh, vaccination? No. Yeah, well done, Divya. Yeah. 
Oh, we've got remains, remains unvaccinated. <laughs> okay. Let me show you my suggestion. Okay, I said, Mr. Mitra has not been vaccinated against seasonal influenza. He expressed concern about possible side effects. <clears throat> the suggestions coming in from, from you guys are a bit better. We're using the conjunction due to. A lot of people here are saying due to concern about possible side effects. Now, I've written this as two sentences because I wanted to remind you that the active voice does also have a place in OET writing. Here, we are saying he expressed concern or Mr. Mitra expressed concern about possible side effects. Now here, I'm focusing on the subject, right? Mr. Mitra, and we're, we're looking at something he did, something he said, he said that he was concerned. You might use this as well with reported, right? Mr. Mitra reported pain in his head, yeah? Okay, so there we have some suggestions. Now, oops, some errors. Some errors are coming in here. See if you can correct the very typical errors in each sentence. I'll give you one minute to try and spot the error. Spot the error. Mm -hmm. Spot the error. Thirty seconds more. Mm. All right. Very good, guys. So here's our corrections. Everyone got the first one. Antibiotics should be continued. Remember the D there. Here you could say Mr. Mitra was or has been advised to cease smoking. And here we don't need was. We should delete was. He agreed to try on his own. So this was is incorrect. OK, it's just he agreed to try on his own. Um, for C, you could say he may benefit from being referred to a smoking cessation support group. You could also say a referral, but make sure that the bean is spelt B-E-I-N-G there. And here I've changed it to has been arranged for 30th of November, but we could say is arranged or was arranged or was arranged. Okay, but make sure that the um, have verb is there as has. And here we've got has not been vaccinated. Mr. Mitchell has not been vaccinated and check the spelling there. Mm -hmm. All right, good. Uh, we can go into more detail with that in our tutorial sessions, but unfortunately we don't have time here. Now, if anyone has any questions, um, drop them in the box um, and I'll see if I can answer one of them. We're pushing up against time. Um, I'll just say while you're putting any questions into the box that we do have live classes that you can join. We've got course materials to get into writing and vocabulary in more detail. And also, if you would like to take advantage of a 20% discount, please do use the code May 20th. So if you purchase an Express Super, uh, Express Plus, gold, silver, gold package, you'll get 20% off um, and you'll get access to unlimited practice questions, unlimited live classes, um, tutorials, 
teacher feedback, the mock test, and um, much more. You'll get the support of uh, everyone here at, at E2 encouraging you and getting you uh, to a place where you can pass your OET first time. We're here very, very keen to help you pass uh, to get the desired band score first time. So I think that uh, will be dropped into the, the chat. Um, Divya is asking the question, and I'm just going to take one question um, here. People saying, is it better to write in the passive form? Again, it depends on what you want to emphasize. But most of the time, you will have more opportunity to show your use of the passive. So I think you should be looking to use it because it also helps your conciseness score and your score for genre as well, okay? So I really do encourage you to master the passive and to get comfortable with using it. And when you're looking at model letters as well, um, please do think about how it's being used there and apply that to your own writing too. So sadly, that is all we have time for today. Thank you very much for joining for this quick live class. It's been lovely to see everyone, see the interactions and see people getting stuck in. Thank you. And I will be seeing you next time. Thank you. Have a good